In the last video, we discussed how strict you should be with your sleep times during a polyphasic adaptation. In this video, we'll address a question from Gabor Shucks, sorry if I botched your name, uh, on how to handle emergency breaks of polyphasic schedules after you have adapted to them. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So I want to start by highlighting that this information does not apply to people that are in the adaptation to a polyphasic schedule, but should instead be implemented only by people who have actually adapted. Still, it's good to know uh, this information during the adaptation as well, so that you can be prepared for what to do once you have adapted and life gets in the way. So let me start by building up a scenario here. You've been adapted to Everyman 2 for two months, and suddenly your boss tells you that you need to start taking the afternoon shift for work for a few days. Um, this forces you to be unable to sleep for your second nap. How do you go about tackling this problem? Well, there are basically two options. Either you skip the second nap for a few days, get thrown back into the adaptation because you've ac accumulated some sleep debt, or instead you flex your sleep times a bit uh, so that you can still take the nap, albeit at a different time. See, after you've adapted to a schedule, you can start something called a flexing adaptation. What this means is that you're teaching the body to sleep within a specific interval of times instead of at a strict time. Um, the flexibility of the schedule depends on several factors, such as the schedule you're on, its total sleep time and so on, and we'll be sure to make a whole video on flexing in of itself in the future. Still. Unless you've gone through a flexing adaptation, it's going to be pretty rough for the body to accumulate instantly to the flexing of the sleep. Um, what this means is that you shouldn't flex your nap by a whole lot. See, so in this scenario, where work forces you to sleep at a different time, you should only consider flexing if it pushes the nap around an hour maximum in either direction, okay? Um, Unless it does that, if it does it even more, if you need to flex it for two hours, for example, in this case, it would be better to skip the nap. In this case, you should also know that flexing your nap will likely lead you, you to feel pretty poor, but still better than if you were to outright skip it. Okay, let's go over a few more examples on how on ways to handle skips or movings of nap. Let's say that you have a party coming up, uh, which is going to cut into your core sleep. You know that you will be drinking here, and you would just prefer to go monophasic for a few days after this, you know, to catch up on the lost sleep. Is this a good idea? No, it's absolutely not a good idea. You need to prioritize sleep for the first of all. Cutting your core um, by, a bit by bit can be done, um, it's doable for some times, but it shouldn't be a frequent thing. When you cut your core, uh, it's going to take a while to repay the sleep debt that you've gained from it, and doing that multiple times a week or even weekly is really taxing on your body. Um, but it's also important to note that when you have gone and cut your core shorter, you shouldn't go monophasic again or any other polyphasic sleep schedule with more sleep time. You need to stay on the standard schedule and repay the sleep debt slowly in that way. Because when you've adapted to a schedule, you've repartitioned your sleep and it's really easy to mess that up. It's hard to get the repartitioning to increase, you know, the light sleep percentage of your core to go down. But it's really easy to make it go up again. So if you force yourself to oversleep by being on a monophasic schedule, you have a really good chance of ruining your whole adaptation. So definitely avoid doing that. In this case, there would also be another option uh, that you could do. You could flex your core to start later. But you should know that it's much harder to do this successfully than with flexing naps. Uh, proceed with extreme caution if you choose to shorten your core or flex your core, okay? 
The best method to handle this is pretty much just to skip the party. Uh, or if you really really want to attend it, make sure that you're drinking modestly and that you're prepared for the aftermath by increasing the number of alarms you have, their intensity. You could even ask people to come and make sure that you're awake and so on. But still, ignoring the party is probably the best idea. Now let's talk about the third situation. You're at work and you get a call saying that your child is sick and needs to be fetched. You know that when your child gets sick, it requires around-the-clock care and you're not going to be able to sleep for your core reliably for several days. This is quite the pickle, okay? But luckily there are ways to handle this. See, in Perduxic's book Uber Sleep, she explains that the Uberman schedule could be used for emergencies like these. Uberman has a very short total sleep time with no course, and as long as it's possible for you to take all the naps that you require on it, you can skip your whole core and replace it with naps by transitioning into the Uberman schedule for up to a week at a time. Cruising on the first adaptation stage energy high so that your cognitive performance or even productivity isn't impaired as much as if you were just skip sleep outright. So the plan in this case would be to switch over to a gradual adaptation from an already adapted polyphasic schedule after the emergency is over, switch back to the old schedule. There are a few things to discuss here. First, you should know that in this case, the repartitioning of your core shouldn't be impaired, as I already stated earlier in this video. When you shorten your sleep, the light sleep percentage of your sleeps are going to remain about the same. It's hard to make it go down. Uh, but when you return to the schedule, it shouldn't raise either. You should stay at a level unless you start sleeping more than what that level is suited for. Um, although this emergency switch will build up sleep depth, um, so you will absolutely be thrown back into the adaptation for the original schedule, but still keep the repartitioning level. You will just have to repay the sleep depth that has accumulated since you did the Uberman switch. I also want to point out that it's totally possible for you to do this emergency Uberman switch but with another schedule with an actual core. So if you're adapted to Everyman 1, you can do an emergency switch to Everyman 2 or Everyman 3. I wouldn't recommend switching between schedule lines in most cases, like doing an Everyman 1 to Dual Core 3. Um, but some switches might still be possible, like if you're doing a Dual Core 1, you might be able to do Everyman 3 for a few days, you know, replacing the second core with two naps. You might also be able to switch from Tri-Core 1 to Dual Core 3, and so on. So what happens if you get a permanent shift in your busy times that force you to change schedules altogether? You should know that doing one schedule during the week, another schedule during the weekends, it's a really bad idea, okay, don't do it. Um, it's best to just ignore that option. The best choice here by far is to do a gradual adaptation, either to reduce your total sleep time, so going for an Everyman 3 schedule from an Everyman 2, or a reverse gradual adaptation, going for an Everyman 1 from the Everyman 2, depending on how your busy times change and what your sleep need is. We actually made a whole video talking about different gradual adaptation methods, and you can check that out in the description below. Okay, so when you need to miss sleep after being adapted to a schedule, you should either skip the sleep, flex the sleep, or do an emergency temporary gradual adaptation. Good. So if you have more questions regarding how to alter your sleep schedule during an emergency, I suggest you ask them in the comments and I should hopefully be able to answer them. Okay, I'll be seeing you in a future video. Nap well, people! Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via our secure Ko-fi page as this helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.